Good morning, everybody. Nothing like the pastor, like not, you know, knowing when to start the service, just yapping back with everybody. That's what I do. I talk to everybody. So welcome to Moore Park Presbyterian Church. Um, Bonnie Bo and Keenan just gave me a new title of spiritual care pastor. So I, I like that. Now, where's the money that goes along with it, Keenan? I just want to know. But I uh, love having you here. I have one little small announcement before we, um, we get started. Uh, Alice Lee, um, who has been a member, she and her husband Phil, members of our church, um, had passed away in November. Her family is going to have a small gathering next Saturday at 3 um, at the Lee's house. And so if you would um, call the church for information, um, they can give you that so that you have it. So let's open our time of worship together in prayer now. Lord, we come to you today lifting up this entire service to you, handing it over to you that our words, our prayers, and our song may be lifted to glorify the kingdom. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit down to be with us, to dwell deep within our hearts as we open them up to all that you have for us today. And so, Lord, it is in your most precious name that we open this time in prayer. Amen. Stand and let's start our time of worship together. Stay standing. This is our time for meet and greet. So turn around, introduce yourself, and maybe tell someone a hobby that you have or a talent that you have. have a seat it's time for announcements 
Before I get to those, if you're a visitor, we have connect cards in the pews. We also have QR codes if you prefer to go that route. But if you're visiting, please fill that out and let us know that you were here and how we can get in touch with you and share information with you. Or if you've been here a while and you're not on our email list or you want to find out about a ministry, fill that out and turn it in in the back in the offering I guess they're offering boxes now, not offering plates. So our first of five announcements is to let you know that Holy Week is coming. Yay! On the 24th with Palm Sunday starting the week off, there's a lot of great things happening. I'm looking forward to the hike on Friday, on Good Friday. So maybe join us for that. But go on the website at mpclife.org and everything is listed just like it is up here. Our second announcement is the Family Talent Show next Sunday. So that's really exciting. Raise your hand if you're going to share a talent. No soccer balls, no singing, dancing, music, playing instruments, Dylan? No one? Okay, well, hopefully you'll get up the courage and reach out to Sean and let him know you'd like to share your talent with us. That would be great. And there's a few more opportunities to sign up for the potluck portion of that evening. So check that out on the website, and you can sign up. And we'll see you there. The third announcement is to remind you to nominate elders and deacons. This is a really important time of the year. So be thinking about who you know in the congregation that has really good leadership skills, but a really strong faith, of course, that's so important. Our elders uh, make a lot of important decisions for us, so uh, nominate who you think might be good at that and interested in doing it as well. And deacons, they take care of our congregation in so many wonderful ways. So if you know someone that has a really big heart, a servant's heart, nominate them. And you can do that online or email the office. Next is VBS, right? Yeah, yay! So VBS is coming in July, so save that date, July 15th through the 19th. But right now, we're looking for volunteers. And some people help just before VBS, which is great. Prepping things is so helpful in building sets and painting, and you don't need a lot of talent. We, we make it easy. And there's opportunities to help during the week. It's so fun to be with the kids and the excitement of what's happening. And I love this theme uh, with the camping. It'll be really fun and trusting in God. And then, of course, there's opportunities to help clean up after. So, you know, if anybody wants to sign up for that, that's a pure joy. So, anyway. The last announcement is for Easter, we're going to have lilies. Uh, Jan Ju is organizing it. So if you would like to purchase lilies, I understand they're $10, and they can be in honor of mem or in memory of someone special in your life. So if you're interested in that, I think she's here after service, so you can sign up for that. Thanks so much. I'm going to call up Richard Vesley to do corporate prayer. Uh, please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for strength and faith today. Help us to know more of your word and face all adversities with the confidence of victory and the ability to move mountains with our faith. Today we pray for your wisdom and guidance to assist us in making the best judgments possible in our lives and in all we do, grant us wisdom understanding, and grace that renews and restores our lives. There are many challenges in our community, and we pray that we remain disciplined in our discipleship to set the example of peace through faith and love, stay passionate about our service, and support our community with discernment and wisdom and the courage to follow your path. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand. the world
Everybody, uh, my name is Eric Tapking. I lead the finance team at MPC. Uh, this is the time in our service where we take our tithes and offerings. And I wanted to share before I talk about the logistics of how we do that, that one of the things that we're doing this year is trying to communicate about the financial health and status of the church in different ways. Traditionally, we've put notes and sometimes just numerical updates in our bulletin, which is fine, but it doesn't always have the context that an actual um, presentation or, or update would give. It's only been about a month since we had our annual meeting where we talked about this a lot, so there's really not a lot of updates, so, so don't worry. Um, but this is kind of how we'll try to communicate in the future to, to give some more context to what's actually happening. Um, so that's, this is, if you haven't seen the updates in the bulletin, it's intentional, it's not a miss. Um, but if you have questions in the meantime, one of our objectives is transparency, both in, within the Presbyterian Church and in this church specifically. We want to be completely transparent about what's going great and areas where we can improve. And there's always both. Uh, so that's what we're doing. And our team, I'm always going to make a plug for this, uh, continues to grow. So if you have any interest at all in being uh, someone who's a part of the finance team and just working in the variety of areas where we can contribute or just being someone who knows a thing or two about anything under the financial banner and is willing to be a resource when other people have questions, uh, we're, making, we're, we're making connections in that area too. So with that said, there are a variety of ways that we can um, accept offerings and tithes and donations. There are QR codes on the back of the seats. Put your camera on your phone on there. Push the link that pops up if you haven't done it before. The website always has a Donate Now button that takes you to the same location. There are boxes in the back that you can drop a check or cash, and you can always mail a check in through uh, snail mail. If you do mail a paper check, please write out More Park Presbyterian Church or just drop it in the office. So we're going to pause now to reflect on all the blessings that God has given us. Thank you. I invite you to stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, He heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. It's time to dismiss our kids for Children's Church. Miss Cammie and her team are in the back. Hi, Miss Cammie. Hi, good morning, Miss Cammie. And I'm going to invite you all to stay standing as we come together in song. <clears throat> I know we're missing a lot of our men today, but that doesn't mean that we can't make a joyful noise and sing our hearts out to the Lord. Oh, shame is a prison, fool as a grave, shame. Robber, and he's come to take my name. Love is my redeemer, lifting me up from the ground. Love is the power where my freedom song is found. There ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. sound 
I'm gonna rise up out of the ground. There ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Oh, 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 Fear is a tyrant, he's always telling me to run. Love is resurrection, love is a trumpet sound. Love is my weapon, I want to take my giants down the ring. For between death and life, there on a tree, the Lamb of God was crucified. He went on down to hell, took back every key. He rose up as a lion, and he said, no. seated. So this is a bit of a new song. So today, if you just want to sit and listen and let it enter your heart, we're going to prepare our hearts and our minds and our souls for the Word of God. You 
I do this to myself all the time, schedule a song that's going to make me emotional right before I preach. <laughs> okay, let's do something funny. Keenan said last week, it's not all about us, but you can see it by the way I dressed, it is all about me today. Now today as we're continuing our Lenten series, Come and See, um, we're going to talk about the miracles of Jesus, one in particular that um, sets the stage for Easter. But first today, um, I got to ask and talk to you guys about texting. And let me preface this by saying that unlike my mother, I consider myself to be a very progressive mom. And what I mean by that is that, you know, I like to keep up on the current technology and the things that my kids are using or doing or saying or even just facing in life. 
Texting, I've always thought since it started, was a really great tool to help keep us connected to family and to friends. It's become a really good business tool for me as well. I like to use emojis, not overuse, just use emojis to emphasize a thought or to express something without using any words. But then came the acronyms. And I sit there sometimes and I stare at my phone and I scratch my head and I'm like, what? What? And I sit there and I try and think and think, what does this mean? So I thought today we would just explore some acronyms that you may or may not know. We're going to start with the easy ones. We're going to work our way up. And then I want you to shout it out. If, as, if you know them, I want you to shout it out. Try to spit that out. Be right back. On my way. On my way. You guys are good. Hello. I don't know. You're better than me. FOMO. FOMO. <laughs> Fear of missing out. Right. Scratching my head, shaking my head. Yeah, there we go. Who said best friend? How old are you? <laughs> okay, I thought that BSF was Bible Study Fellowship. <laughs> you can see why I'm clueless? Ladies, come on. Daughters of the Risen King. If you know, you know. YOLO, just like FOMO, <laughs> you only live once. And my favorite one, though I doubt we would ever see it in a text, to be honest, and it's from another pastor. Any guesses on this one? Please be patient, God is not finished with me yet. You know, I fully expect that when my kids watch this service, um, that they will be rolling on the floor laughing at my confession of acronym ineptitude, and I know that's R-O-F-L, don't, you don't have to tell me, guys. I often think, though, how useful texting actually is. Like when I'm cooking, and I'm in the kitchen, and my kids are a few feet away, but they text me to find out when dinner, dinner's going to be ready. <laughs> or when I'm here in Moore Park and Presbytery Business in Santa Barbara can be handled from 80 miles away. How messages and requests and updates of all kinds in so many situations can be sent by typing them in a little box on your phone and then pressing the little send arrow, and within seconds you can be in conversation with people all around the world. But this wasn't so in the days of Jesus, was it? People had to physically go and talk to other people. Imagine that. And they had to send word by a messenger to um, convey what they needed or what they wanted. So when Mary and Martha sent word that their brother Lazarus, who was Jesus's BFF, I'm going to be annoying today, was very sick, Jesus didn't hurry to go to Bethany where they lived. As my grandmother would say, he parked his carcass where he was and hung around for two more days before he took a two-day journey to get there. He didn't send word ahead that he wasn't coming or when he was coming. So Mary and Martha had no idea, but I think if there had been texting capabilities back then, this is the message that Jesus would have sent to Martha. He would have said to her, Martha, do not worry. Your brother Lazarus will rise again. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. I will be on my way as soon as I can. Do not lose faith. You will see God's glory if you believe. Be patient. God is not finished with him yet. You know, when I read the entire Lazarus death passage from beginning to end, I can see where Martha would have been confused by the fact that Jesus didn't run to be with Lazarus as he took his last breath. 
And after Jesus finally arrived, I can see where she would have shaken her head at him, wanting to stone rolled away and said to him, what are you, crazy? He's dead, dude. Don't roll the stone away. It stinks in there now. I, what I love so much about this miracle and what preceded it and what followed it is that it shows us that nothing, nothing Jesus did or does is arbitrary. Everything he did, he did with an end goal in mind. And here's the thing. Jesus was a slow reveal, right? I love that expression. Jesus was a slow reveal. He didn't just come on the scene, start his ministry, and then show the disciples and the followers everything that he knew or the, what was going to happen all right away at the beginning. No, everything he did, he did with purpose, slowly leading up to the ultimate reveal at Easter. And this story of Lazarus' death is no exception. It's only one of seven miracles that John chose to highlight in his gospel, and it is actually the last one that he chooses to write about. And if you're asking why, well, I believe it's because it's bookended by two significant events that lead us right up to Easter. So we're going to read our scripture now for this morning, and then we can look at the importance of this miracle and its bookends. It comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 34 to 43. And I'm going to ask you to stand with me, and we're going to read God's word together. Maybe. There we go. No, that's not it. Do we not have it? Okay. Take a seat. <laughs> I'm going to read it to you. Let's hear God's word. Where have you put him, he asked them. He told them, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, see how much he loved him? But some said, this man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb, a cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus responded, didn't I tell you you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe that you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. My friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray for God to illuminate our message today. Lord, once again, I stand here, lift up all that uh, this service offers today to you. And I ask that your Holy Spirit come and lift up our hearts as we hear your word. That all that I say may be acceptable in your sight and that the words that I speak may be your words and not mine. Lord, give us this time together that we may go out after this into the world and bring your message to others. And it is in your most precious name that we pray. Amen. Now, if you were with me at the women's retreat last month, you'll remember how we talked about the importance of Jesus calling us by our name. Dorks, right? Now, guys, just so you don't feel left out, you would be sorks, but that really just doesn't have the same kind of ring to it, now does it? <laughs> now, truly, though, what I said at the retreat was we don't want to be known as the fifth person from the center in the third to the last pew from the left side of the church in the back. We long for Jesus to know us and call us by name. And we long for Jesus to be with us in times of trouble and distress. Jesus knew Lazarus. He knew him as a friend, as a believer, 
and as a follower. He knew him so well that when Mary and Martha sent word that he was sick, their message to Jesus referred to Lazarus as the one you love. Now, if that was true, then why didn't Jesus go running to heal Lazarus while he was sick instead of waiting until he was dead? Well, for the answer to that, I think we have to look at the first bookend, and that's a few verses back in John 11. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. And Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Now here is where Jesus lays the groundwork, so to speak, telling Martha that whoever believes in him will never die even after dying. He was in effect setting up the fact that he would go and bring Lazarus back from death, raising him up from darkness and bringing him out into the light. We need to remember that Jesus came to take the power of death away. He didn't let Lazarus die to be cruel. He did it in order that people would believe that God had sent him. Believe that he was indeed the Son of God. Lazarus, in turn, was to become one of the most powerful witnesses to Jesus' power over death and the grave. So you see, God wasn't finished with Lazarus yet. And it doesn't end there because the miracle of Lazarus being raised from the dead is only the book in between the bookends. Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead was not only a testimony to those who lived at that time, but it is also a witness to us today. Because the second bookend is that just a few short days after Lazarus was raised to life, Jesus would be on his way to Jerusalem, where he would stand trial, be handed over to Roman soldiers, and march to suffer on the cross. He then would be buried, and on the third day, he would rise from the dead. Now, you may be thinking, then why bother raising Lazarus from the dead if Jesus knew he was going to rise from the dead shortly thereafter? And here's what I believe the answer is. If Jesus was the only one to rise from the dead, what difference would that make to us? I mean, he's God after all. Everybody would expect him to be able to rise from the dead. But you and I and Lazarus, we're not God. In fact, we're very, very mortal, and death is expected for us. In raising Lazarus from the dead, Jesus was allowing us a preview of what he can and will do for us. He was showing the people who witnessed Lazarus' raising and thereby leaving for us today a testimony that his power over death is far-reaching and that all fear of death should be erased from our minds. He was presenting the evidence of his claims of not only being the Son of Man, but that his death and resurrection would indeed be fulfilled and in that fulfilling, so would our own raising from the dead be guaranteed. And then later, the Apostle Paul, he affirms this in Romans 8, 11, when he says this, If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. 
Our next acronym, W-I-J-D. So what is Jesus doing? How does what Jesus did for Lazarus speak to what he is doing for us? When Jesus calls us out of whatever grave we are in right now, if we believe in him, if we trust, and if we have faith, and if we rise up and get out of that grave and follow him, he promises to give us new life right here, right now. New life to face our time here on earth without fear. New life to live with the hope for the eternal life that he will give us after our time here is over. My friends, Jesus didn't just come to raise us from the grave into eternal life. He came to raise us from the graves we are in today that the enemy wants us to believe we have no way out of. But Jesus stands in front of our tombs of darkness and he says to us, come out. Come follow me into the light. Make no mistake, and this is important, the enemy wants to keep you in that grave you have dug or are digging for yourself right now. And by graves, I'm not referring to the literal holes in the ground that are at a cemetery. Our graves come in many forms, alcohol, depression, shame, deep, deep grief, unforgiveness, suicidal thoughts, addictions, bitterness, and the list goes on, so much more. The enemy is just waiting for you to die to your problems, to succumb to the difficulties that life continues to throw your way through its inevitable trials and tribulations. He doesn't want you to believe. And he doesn't want you to be imbued with the knowledge that Jesus gives us new life right here and now through his Holy Spirit. The enemy wants you to die permanently, both spiritually and physically. He wants our mortality to be our finality. He wants us to give up, and unfortunately, there are many people outside there who don't know about Jesus, who are living with one foot in the spiritual grave right now. So what grave in your life is holding you down right now? It's time to allow Jesus to come to our gravesite and call us out. It's time to rise up and receive the breath of life. It's time for us to become the powerful witnesses that Lazarus became. My friends, there ain't no grave that's going to hold you down when you put your life in the hands of Jesus Christ. No grave. It's time for us to be the light of the world that Jesus called us to be. Be the light of the world to others, encouraging them to take this message to heart. Don't let the enemy win. Don't let the enemy get inside your head and convince you that there's no way out. There is. Jesus is the way out. And the last thing I want to say to you is this. Of course, I'm going to end with an acronym. Don't give up. God is not finished with you yet. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we yearn so much for a new life with you, and we continually find ourselves sinking into darkness. 
Let us believe in you and your promises so that we can rise up and face each dawning day by stepping into the light with the knowledge and assurance that you have indeed conquered the grave so that we may be raised to eternal life with you. And it is in your son's name that we pray all this. Amen. I invite you to stand. Are you too scared to move and walk out of this tomb? Buried underneath the lies that you believed. Safe and sound, stuck in the ground, too lost to be found. You're just asleep, and it's time to leave. Morning, rise up, take a breath, you're alive. your veins was more than blood it's a kind of love that washes it away now the door is open wide stones bitter on the side the old is gone the light is come so come on and rise up take a breath you're alive now can't you hear the voice of jesus calling text acronyms what else can i say rise up rise up out of that grave because there is nothing 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 that can hold you down if you believe and put your life in the hands of jesus christ he's standing in front of the stone waiting to roll it away and bring you out of your darkness into the light if you don't know Jesus, if you need somebody to talk to, I'm going to have Richard and Gail 
Hughes, Richard Vesley, Gail Hughes, they're going to be up here offering to pray for you. Allow them to come and bring you into the knowledge that Jesus is there waiting for you. Now, my friends, receive this blessing. Go out. The power and the glory of Jesus Christ standing in front of the tomb, calling you to come to him. Follow him out these doors into the world and be witnesses to everyone that you encounter outside of these doors. Amen. Have a nice week.